I happen to know a couple of assistant coaches that at least once upon a time, not assistant coaches, personnel, yeah. all of that stuff, yeah. that worked under John Gruden yeah. at one moment in time. Here's what one guy wrote me. Great offensive coach, worst leader of men I was around in 30 years of football. The guy says one thing, does another. Doesn't want accountability at all. Absolutely horrible guy. That's what somebody who worked under John Gruden texted me last night. And all I'm saying to you is this. At the end of the day, again, let me remind people, John Gruden was absolutely nice to me. Um, I've had pleasant communication with him me when he as, worked me as at, well, at, interaction. At, at, all of us. We love talking Always football. Because he could talk football all day, every day. And I know people, in fairness to him, yeah. Who swear, who swore, I wouldn't say swore, I say past that because yeah. I can't imagine they swear by him today. <laughs> but they swore by him, okay? Maybe he fooled some folks. Maybe he, I don't, maybe they knew. I don't know. But what I do know is this. When you offend, when you are that offensive to that many people, I've always, always had this problem. Hold on, Rikisha. I've always had this problem. I always because the world that we live in today, no matter how crazy it may be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're so much better off now than we were, obviously, in years past. So I've always raised an eyebrow when people bring up plantation mentality and things of that nature as it pertains to owners, particularly in the NBA, because I don't view them that way. But when I think about the NFL and the power that they have over these players, 70% black, hard salary cap, all of this stuff. And I think about, because I got on the phone with an owner today, this morning, driving mm -hmm. in here, and I said, talk to me about these NFL owners. And they were like, listen, man, with the NBA, he said, it ain't just Adam Silver. When there's an issue that goes down, you see the owners themselves. You never really see the owners. Outside of Robert Kraft or Jerry Jones, you barely see any owners in the NFL saying anything. Everybody hides behind the commissioner. And what they do is engage in these kind of actions that say, okay, let's get through the moment, let's get through the moment, and then they go back to being who they are as owners. He said, what you have is a situation well, you got Mark Davis as an Al Davis. Al Davis was very progressive in his yeah. thinking. I mean, he hired Art Shell, who came from an HBCU. Amy Trask was his right hand. You had all of this stuff going on. And, when, and, and John Gruden used to have friction with Al Davis, from my understanding. Yes. So here you have a situation where Mark Davis embraced Al, uh, uh, John Gruden. That was his guy. And you look at the kind of statements that, are being made, that were made in this email, you can only imagine what was said in person. And this is a guy that you have, uh, that you had as your leader of men. And by the way, Mark Davis, all right, and, and because I, I reached out to him last night, invited him on first take, didn't hear back from him, don't expect to hear back from him, but I wanted him to have that invitation. From my understanding, Mark Davis had all of this information Friday. Yeah, but... What but, the hell were you doing letting John Gruden coach Sunday? That's tough, though, Stephen A. Sure. It's, it's tough because Friday... We, you got all this information. I got it. I got it now. Sift through it in my brain. Saturday comes. We're game planning. It's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. It's a lot going on. Sunday comes. Okay, you lose the game. Whatever the case is, I don't personally believe that if the second emails would have just kind of stayed dormant for a little bit, he still would have got canned. They just you because the noise was gonna get louder amongst the NFL player community. Mm -hmm. You got to remember now, it's the weekend. Traveling, teams, the Cleveland Browns are going from Cleveland to, to L.A. to play the Chargers. The Rams are over. You know, it's just everybody everywhere. Yeah. Right. So until the day settled down when you get to Monday, then the ball, the second ball dropped with the New York Times, at that point he had to cut bait because he couldn't come back from it. They could only hold water for so long in this situation. Yeah, that's how that, you look at it. No, no, that, that, I'm no, telling you, Stephen A. No, I'm not, I'm not disputing what you're saying. I'm saying there's another way to look at it in this regard. The NFL had the information. The NFL... But from, you know they're going to move no, no, slow. No, I'm saying, the NFL, from my understanding, yeah. they were upset that Gruden was coaching Sunday. Absolutely. They, they, they expected Mark... They, so, in other words, what I'm saying to you is I understand your point, 
But the NFL had a different opinion. They wanted than a heavier hand. They wanted a heavier from hand Mark sooner. Davis. They wanted him they going before. Do so I'm just saying. Do that in I, hours. I feel you on that. I'm just saying. But Keyshawn is Keyshawn, and I get that. Yeah. I'm not disputing it. I'm saying the NFL. Yeah. yeah. The same thing that I said. The NFL wanted that handle before Sunday's game. Yeah. So their attitude. Why so even so, let him troll the sidelines on Sunday? That's what they. Yeah. Were I get it. That's their. Position. I get it. But I guess I'm right. more practical in okay. how the owner in the team is probably thinking at that point in time. But if you're practical, is it possible mm -hmm. that the NFL knew this and Mark Davis knew it sooner than Friday? And the NFL is saying, "What the hell did you? Why the hell did yes, you do absolutely. something sooner?" That's what absolutely. I'm saying. So, absolutely. in in all likelihood, Mark Davis had to be dragged kicking and screaming to this ultimate position. Because, think about it, though, Steve. Somebody's coming in, walking, and telling you your head coach got to be fired, yeah. and you got $100 million, $60 million left on this contract. Mark, he's sitting there probably like, what the hell just See, happened? Six years. Yeah, you know, six years I'm, I'm, he's trying to figure all that out. And the money ain't that. even a bigger part of it yeah. right. in the grand scheme of things. The money, is, he'll make that up ten right. times fold. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying it says it should say something to us. That the NFL had a problem yes. with you Absolutely. having him coach on those sidelines this past Sunday. Absolutely. So yeah, that the so, NFL's on the right side well, of so, things. Well, not just that. Well, of course. The, N the, N the NFL. <laughs> I mean, how the hell did the New York Times get that information? Yeah. It damn sure wasn't from Mark Davis. Yeah. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.